Hi everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the first um, edition of uh, Mental Health Yourself uh, in Guyana, that is. Um, so today we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, my experience in Barbados and I'll be looking at not only the program itself but um, areas of improvement, areas of growth and learning within myself and so we'll be able to kind of go uh, a little bit in depth but not too much um, about how the program was. So let's begin with what was Barbados like? Now Barbados is a very interesting country, um, very conservative um, but with a new government um, and hopefully a lot of changes that will come about. The people are, like I would say, very different from Guyanese. Um, they're a little bit more reserved. They have grown up in a small island with basically the same people they would have gone to school with and, and, and lived among. And so it can be a little bit harder to break in as a new person. Um, a lot of times I found it difficult to make new friends. Uh, when I did make new friends, it was mostly like guys and then from guys or classmates or um, workmates, I would then meet other people. So one of my recommendations I would say straight off the bat is get involved in stuff. Um, so whether that's church or school or play, um, from there you can kind of network and meet more people. And luckily, because I was doing multiple things on top of my degree, I was able to kind of stay connected to people that um, maybe my other classmates who weren't working um, or going out or as busy as myself may not have been as exposed to um, networking in that regard. Now, what did I learn? So I lived in Toronto for several years and I always said I never had, I would never be one who got culture shock. And so for me, it wasn't necessarily a culture shock, but definitely just a difference in environment and difference in people. And being an older person at that time and going there for my master's was different from the, the average person just visits Barbados for like a week or a weekend. And so it became very um, important for me to develop myself, to develop networking, to develop a sense of security. Because sometimes when you're home and you're, doing a, you know, you're in your program and you're home, and everybody's at work, you've got to be able to kind of say to yourself, well, I can do these things on my own, or I can go shopping on my own, or I can go to Bridgetown by myself. And because I'm a very relatively independent person, um, that was not really a problem for me. Um, it was just interesting to see how, um, having lived in Toronto, and it was very comfortable to just get up and get on the streetcar and go to Toronto, um, go down downtown Toronto and kind of hang about. Whereas in Barbados, um, it was a little bit different. You have to wait on buses. You have to um, sometimes you don't want to go out there by yourself um, because it's kind of boring. Um, so you kind of have to get used to doing things sometimes on your own because if you don't develop that network of friends or persons, it's going to be hard for you to be able to um, enjoy your time. Like I said, luckily because I'm someone who an older student and someone who kind of developed a rapport with others, I was able to. Um, either hang out with persons I knew and when I did not have those uh, opportunities I just went to like the beach by myself. So definitely um, the program helped me develop a sense of self and a sense of independence that perhaps if you if you were someone who never left your country and never uh, you know did a program away from home you may not have been exposed to people and culture and, and, and patterns of behavior that you would see traditionally um, in your own country. Um, what did I learn about myself? Now, I think it, this is very similar to the first question, but I definitely learned about myself that um, we have to develop about my own mental health. I think that that's where that question was geared from. I got a lot of these questions from like other people. Um, what I learned about myself is that it can get really um, daunting. The program is hard enough. You're dealing with culturally different persons, um, traditionally different persons. And so what I had to learn about myself was I had to basically be pretty um, 
confident in my abilities to um, either make friends, maintain friends, um, or um, you know, be okay with being alone. And I think that that's like a separate topic on its own for another time with, it's hard that we live in this generation with being okay with being alone. And I think that that is something that the, me living in Barbados did help me to continue to practice. Because in Toronto, um, there was times when you'd be alone and people are in class or people are gone away for Christmas. Like I've spent Christmas in Toronto um, and that's a very different experience. And so I think definitely it helped me develop a sense of self and a, self, a sense of self-independence and being able to say like, okay, I am not going to just call up somebody who I may not even like just because I am not comfortable with being alone. And sometimes you see that. A lot of people hang out with like really uh, shady people or um, unhealthy friendships or hold on to unhealthy friendships um, because they're afraid of being alone. And, and that was not something that I really experienced too much. There were some times when I was like, oh, why can't I just go out with my friends? Or why don't patients do this? Or why don't patients do that? You know, and you have those moments. Um, whereas, because again, I was a little bit more accustomed to, you know, a big city and, and being one in a thousand people on the matter of a block, um, moving around in Bridgetown was quite natural and a lot of times I'd have my earphones in and if I didn't hear the Bayesian accent sometimes the hustle and bustle of Bridgetown made me feel like I really was back in Georgetown and so that was just really it was nostalgic in that sense and you know when you get the street hustlers and the people asking you, know, you want a taxi and that kind of thing so it's very like you know you got used to just either like ignoring people or learning to engage with people um, so that was definitely um, little bits of learning things. Do I have any regrets? So I don't regret going to Barbados. I don't regret taking the leap and the, the leap and the financial leap and the emotional and physical leap. For those who have known, I had a very difficult last six months in my internship. And even that I don't regret because my internship has enabled me to come home and literally start working yesterday. Um, I came home two days ago. And so for me, I did not, even though it was difficult, I learned that every supervisor is gonna be different and every supervisor has had their own experience. I know what I'm like as a supervisor and it was not really the way that I best learned. And so going forward, it's up for people to, it's up to people to realize like, is this how I'm learning and more so do I have enough courage to say to like my supervisor and this could be in a supervisor in a job it doesn't necessarily be an internship and in general do I have enough courage to step up and say this is not working for me this type of supervisory you know um, routine or mode is not working for me and I think that was one of my biggest regrets I waited really long before I said this isn't working and I feel really bad and my mental health is under siege. And I think that would be definitely my biggest regret was that I wish when I was having problems in March and April, I either spoke to my supervisor and or went to my coordinator of my um, program. And I said that, look, these are the problems I'm having. This is not what's comfortable for me. I don't feel that this is a growing environment and I wish I had stepped up and been brave enough to, and be courageous enough to say like, I'm having a hard time. And I think even as a mental health practitioner, I talk and I encourage people to step up and ask for help. I encourage, I always ask my followers, make the, be courageous and make the step to ask someone if they're okay. And the thing is, along this way, because I guess a lot of people thought I, I was doing so well and I'm the mental health practitioner. No one really stopped to ask if I was okay along this way. And maybe it was just my way of just being really good at hiding that I was having challenges or everyone just thought I had my stuff together. So definitely, um, I didn't listen to my own medicine. I didn't listen to my own advice. I didn't take my own medicine. I didn't, didn't listen to my own advice and I didn't step up when it really would have been beneficial for me to do so. Um, would I recommend the program to people? Of course. As much as it may have been challenging for me, it, 
especially in the end, I would definitely recommend this program to all and every one in Guyana who has any passion and drive and interest in the mental health field. I definitely, I was, I've never been a straight A student and I came into this program in a master's level at almost 30 and I became a straight A student for the first time in my life. And I think I got one B plus, but everybody got B pluses in that course. Every single one of us, like 23 people got all B pluses. And that was like my only B plus, and other than my internship. So, um, and that was difficult on its own and that's a different marketing scheme altogether. But definitely I would recommend people into this program. I have spoken with Paho about two and a half years ago um, Paho had me uh, do a consultancy with them on something and they asked what partnership should the Ministry of Health and Paho, um, what programs should we do? And I said, if it is that mental health is getting 16 to, eight, uh, 16 to 20 million dollars, then what I would recommend is that 3 million or up to 9 million dollars be put aside for this program and every year or every other year we try to get someone into the cohort every year and even if the PAHO and the Ministry of Education can just Ministry of Health sorry can cover just the cost of the um, the program that's better than nothing I mean had I been able to cover had the government covered my program I would have been in a much better financial place than I am right now so by all means if we can't do it from we couldn't have done it for me we might as well do it for the future future psychologists future practitioners of Guyana so of course I recommend this program to everybody and of course I, I encourage people to support their children and even adults who are like you know I've been in social work a long time or I'm in business or I'm in something else and I've been maybe I work for Ministry of Foreign Affairs like I did maybe you work for an embassy and you're really passionate about helping people and you really want to um, go out there and make a difference by all means come and speak to me I have a old old volunteer um, that I would have done I would have been her mentee or sorry her mentor about like six years ago and she just messaged me the other day She's with Rotaract and I had done a presentation for uh, Mental Health Month last year to the Rotaract um, team on mental health in the workplace. And so she messaged me and she was like, I got in and I'm like, what'd you get in? And she's like, I got into the program. And I'm like, oh, congratulations, because I didn't know. And so I sat down and had a long conversation with her about what to expect in this program. And I encourage everyone, if you have interest in this program, or you have interest in the mental health field, come and speak to me. I am, I will give you the truth. Trust me, I will give you the truth and I will tell you what to do, what to make sure you don't do, what do you work hard on, what do you push yourself in, how mentally draining it's going to be, how your own mental health may come under siege if you don't take care of yourself, and that kind of thing. Um, so tips for preparation, before I close, tips for preparation for Barbados. Um, definitely go and do your homework, go and do your research, look into like appropriate housing, connect with people who've been there, come and speak to me, come and speak to other people who've lived or worked or studied in Barbados. You know, we have so much um, capabilities on social media now with like polls and questions and stuff like that. Ask people, like before I left, I asked people, should I go with RBC or should I go with Scotia Bank? I asked people if I should go with Flow or if I should go with Digicel. So these are just little things that you can do. Definitely seek out knowledge, seek out information before you get there. Look for the people who've been there, look for the people who are now really experts in moving around in the Caribbean. I've worked in Jamaica, I've spent a lot of time in Trinidad, Guyana, Toronto and Barbados. So I can tell you about a few countries and about how things are um, different and by all means don't come to me if you're not comfortable go to other people because they'll be able to help you figure out what to expect on this journey. Um, and so definitely I encourage networking, get to know people, get out there, get involved. If you're religious, get involved in church when you arrive. Get involved in volunteering. See if you can get a job. Before you get there, go into Ministry of Foreign Affairs and try and get your CSME done. If you can get your CSME done, then you might be able to work in Barbados. And that's a whole other discussion on the process. And that's something that you can do if you come to the right people who know what, they're, what they've been through and what they're talking about. So anyway, that was just a quick summary of what my life like was for two years in Barbados and it it barely skims on the top of things I encourage people to come and like 
talk to me, message me, ask me questions. What was it really like? What was this like? What was dating like in Barbados? Yes, I dated in Barbados. So like, you know, what is the nightlife like? What is the working um, environment like? You know, what about safety? These are all things that we can't cover in these like 15, 20 minutes. So definitely, by all means, if you want to see a part two to this or you want to know about something specific, definitely message me, let me know. Remember to subscribe on my mental health playlist will help mental health challenge so rise a can at um, rise a can mental health and then of course you can always follow me on instagram or facebook and tune in for the next time i'll be doing uh 13 reasons why part two in the next week or so once i can get down to binging binge watching um but thank you all for tuned in and thank you all for listening and remember share 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 get the word out there mental health is everybody's business Thanks.